Well, boys, I mean, I just had to do this. I've been anxious to talk about the Midnight Cat Studio Hive. And, you know, it's funny because they call it the Max Ace Hive. And Max Ace makes Max Ace knives. And Max Ace also makes Midnight Cat Studio knives. So, and it doesn't say Max Ace. It says MC Studio. So, I think it's Midnight Cat Studio. What's interesting is that this has got this Zermascus inlay here, and you could get it with this gold shred, I mean, yeah, carbon fiber, gold shred, whatever, mix. Like they've got inlaid here in the blade, but you can get it on the scales. And it's not an integral, and you'd think for the price it would be, because this thing is... This, this one was the most expensive of them. So it was like $580. And I think the others were like $475 to $490. Yeah, this was uh, $585. It's out of stock. I don't think Justin at White Mountain Knives got many of these in the Zermascus. I don't think he got many of them regardless. And overall length, 9.6 inches. Blade length is a lie. That's more than 3.8. And uh, <laughs> I don't know why they always try and understate their blade length sometimes. M390, you're saying 60 to 62 HRC. Would I know that? No, I don't have a Rockwell on it. There's the handle length, uh, titanium Zermascus, 6.38 multi-row bearings. Flipper can be removed and they're individually numbered and it's in a huge, huge box like this. Check this out. I mean, it's like, I'm sorry, is there a compact Glock in here or what? I mean, this thing is a huge case. And of course, I mean, it's that kind of foam where you can remove certain cells and you can make it to where you can put different knives in. So it came in that. Zermascus, 210 grams. And it's the hive. And it says Max Ace, but Midnight Cat Studio. So, okay. I'm calling it MC Studio because it says that all over the damn place, including on the box. Now, let's see if we can push this mostly out of the way so we can look at the knife itself. And I like the Zermascus. It's... I know. I mean, there's going to be always got to have one guy doing the mall ninja or gas station. If you can buy this in a gas station, let me know. I'm going to that gas station, okay? Um, titanium pocket clip and backspacer as well, but obviously they're anodized. So it gives it nice pop when you got gold in here and you kind of got gold in here. You got gold in the backspace. You got gold on the flipper tab because it's removable right here. And that's a little number six, I believe. And they may have made it that way. Yeah, it's a number six. They probably made it that way for certain venues where flipper tab is, uh, that kind of knife is not legal. But hell, I mean, you know, who gives a crap, right? The thing is huge. It's a monster knife. I mean, back back the camera up. Uh, this thing barely fits in the, in the picture. Whew. Okay, um, like I said, they said 3.8 inches, right? Did they not say 3.8 inches? What would you say the blade length is? Just kind of give me an idea. How about four and three eighths? Okay, 4.35 inches at about 115 millimeters. Overall length, nine and a half inches. What did they say? Hold on, come on. I'm getting back here. 3.8 inches? Come on. Wrong. Like I was saying, I don't know why that happens, but I think they're afraid that it's going to be illegal because if it's over at or over four inches, who cares? It's a monster knife. Uh, 9.6, 9.55 maybe, somewhere in there. And it's all of 24 and a half centimeters. She's a big girl right there. And she, ooh, let's see, what did they say? 180 grams? Did they say that? I forgot already. It's 202 grams. 
7.12 ounces and they said 6.38 6.38 ounces no no 7.12 maybe it's lighter with the carbon fiber version than the zermascus and so that may have been just a carryover number that they made when they were listing them um here are the different ones that were available oh is that the mokume and then of course there's the flake carbon fiber one and then there's the zermascus one so way down to a super cheap 4.99 although remember and of course they're probably all out of stock i don't even know if you can buy one anywhere because they own they're, they're numbered and then there's only so many of them and all that kind of stuff And this one is number 112. And that's the thing about some of these ones that Midnight Cat Studio does or Max Ace, if they get crazy, they'll make a model. They won't make that many of them and they'll sell out pretty quickly, but they're pretty expensive. And so that may be something a lot of people are gonna turn their nose up at anyhow. I kind of like it because I think it's intriguing that they get crazy. I mean, Look at all the work that goes into this thing. Look at all the machining. How does this Zermascus inlay line up with this? And look at the machining you've had to do in all these cutouts, the backspacer, all that. On the other side, look at the pocket clip. I mean, it's not just a plain old pocket clip. No screws visible. And we will take this apart, God willing, if we can. But... Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty cool. Now, got a little piece of paper around here. Oh, came off of that, came off of that recurve and hit a stop sign. Okay, that's, yeah. I can feel this is very sharp, okay? Yeah, this along this recurve area. Yeah, that's sharp too, but when you transition, yeah, you kind of get funky there. Yeah, yeah, it's sharp. And you know, this will be everybody's uh, fun thing to uh, to sharpen a recurve with a hollow grind, huh? And then you got a flat grind, normal blade. I don't know, I mean, I guess that does add to the the style of the knife. Uh, I don't know if it adds to the functionality of the knife, but it, you know, it gives it some style points when you do that with the blade. Not sure, but what I would have preferred they carry this all the way, actually. Got a little bit of a breakaway here for sharpening purposes. And like I said, you can remove that if you want. I don't want uh let's drop it see we're still not over the detent but uh and it says m390 there kick it uh there you go now that that flipper tab is big enough to where you can hang back and by the time it hits you in the thumb it's over the detent ball okay and walks around walks around and closes uh the top here is crowned it's really beautiful and smooth no uh no sharp edges of any kind here this is almost like it's kind of a bead blast on this titanium these are big old thick liners uh that's 20 percent lock up if at all and it's solid no blade plate or lock rock and you can see how they put some jimping machining there and a little cutaway in there so you can get your thumb in there easily and disengage the blade and you know what it almost feels like they've got maybe a little detent ramp or something built because even if you're on the detent ball just a little nudge will get it to drop so we'll know more when we take it apart a lot of things this inlay here is really seamless 
That's kind of like that Venom Attacker knife by, uh, oh, yeah, by Kevin John. You know, they have an inlay in that blade and it's seamless. This is very seamless. But it's kind of a mix and match. I mean, if you had the model with that carbon fiber all the way across here, then that makes sense. But when you got the Zermascus inlay, then where does this make sense? It would have made more sense if they would have had this Zermascus inlay in this area here. So, but I just couldn't say no to the Zermascus. I, it's just, I know it was more money, but I thought it was well worth it for the look. Uh, it's got some weight to it and it's probably not going to be your everyday carry. You know, it's just, uh, it's big, it's heavy and, oh, well, let's do some basic math here because check this out. It's going to be fat. Oh God. 18 at uh, 0 0.71, seven tenths of an inch thick. I mean, that is thick. 0.18. Almost five millimeter thick blade stock, you know. So, I mean, it's big, but it's thick. 7.12 ounces. I'm surprised it's not heavier than that, considering that this is seven tenths of an inch and that's almost five millimeter blade stock. Uh, it's probably amazing, but you know, I mean, obviously, all the cutaways here have reduced the weight, but look at how thick those sides are, those scales are. And I wonder if I can kick that now if I need to wait till I, you know, 4.3 millimeters. Yeah, 4.2, 4.3 millimeters on each side. Wow. Wow. That's a bunch. Kick it. And yeah, it's like it's got a little ramp there. I'm just a little intimidated by it. If I back up a little bit more, which most knives I can't, this knife will let you do that. That pocket clip, I have carried this. Uh, and you know what? The pocket clip works fine. Uh, it's, you know, none of these milled pocket clips are as good as like a, you know, as a stamped one that's you know really makes sense like this but you know it, it it worked i mean i didn't get a big hang up or anything over it so it's all right and number eight's all along the body not that many screws here really and then i guess when we pop it apart we'll see inside we've got a screw coming from the back side into that pocket clip Design flow is great. Uh, you got a little bit of a break here, but that's okay. And down here, blade to handle length is, yeah, I can touch the tip there. So, um, yeah, uh, okay, you got it all. You got it all. Um, you know, this backspacer wraps all the way around. See how that is? Yeah. But, okay it, it's all the way there uh, yeah uh, detent seems appropriate okay I tried to fail it didn't do that uh, let's try it again come on oh almost but no not quite so I think it's it's where it needs to be I I wouldn't call it a five I'd call it like a four point five maybe as far as detents concerned let me see if i can throw this out okay yeah 4.5 at best but it i mean it works it works and there's no other way to open this thing really um you know there's no cutaways on the blade or thumb studs or anything like that so yeah you got to go with the flipper tab and i'd say yeah that detent's totally appropriate really nice knife i really like it well we got an entrance front and back and uh it'd be easier to take it apart from the front but oh and it's way easier uh this is not a problem at all so that's what we're gonna do well, no thread locker or anything on it. Thank God for small favors, right?
Uh, 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 uh. No, you don't, buddy. On the back side, he was starting to show his ugly head. Ooh, is this what we're going to have? Okay. And we may have to come out the back way then with these. If they're going to be like that. So we take the screw out on the presentation side. And then we take these screws out on the lock bar side. And then these things will probably just fall out practically. These two things here. Um, so let's see what we got. Because they should pull apart. Well, we got multi-row bearings. We got, oh, well, we got a lot of weight relieving going on under here, don't we? There's the backspacer. Which you got these little pass-throughs going through there. Let me see what these look like. Okay, they're perfectly round. Uh, so, okay. Put it back in. Looks clean, doesn't it? Wow. Where's my little magnet? Uh, there we go. Come out right there. Kind of a little bit of oil. Uh, let, you know what? Forget that. Let's just take it all out. I'll take those two out too. Okay. All right. There's our spacer. Yeah. I wonder if uh, you can take the Zermascus uh, inlay out. Uh, I think so. I think I'm feeling it move. Yeah. Yeah, yes you can. And there's the underside of it. Looks crazy. It looks as good on the underside as it does on the top, doesn't it? That's interesting. And there's the little tiny screw that holds it in. But it looks clean underneath. Multi-row bearings. Come here. Come on, let's get back onto this thing. They look scary. They look scary. Are those captured? I don't know if they're captured or not. Um, you know, I've had them not be captured, and it, I paid hell putting them all back in to the right place. I think I'm going to leave them alone. Oh, yeah, and there's that. There it goes. Well, they didn't fall out. Um, I'm not going to press my luck. Detent ramp. That's why that was kicking over so easy. It has a detent ramp on it. So, yeah, they did a great job. Yeah, they kind of paid it a lot of attention to the details. Ooh. Oh, well, we lost our stop. Now... Which brings us to, what is that blade stop like? And that's almost four millimeters, yeah. So I did the CKF Sablia, and it was three or 2.9 millimeters. This is almost a full millimeter thicker as a stop. So, in fact, here's the Sablia, there's the stop. Here's the one from Midnight Cast Studio. Yeah, way thicker, way thicker. So, interesting. Both of them are big damn pocket swords. So, even on the back side, okay, okay, see what we got here? No wonder. Um, so, this is a D-shaped pivot here that they've done. But it's got screws on both sides, so you can unscrew it however you want. But yeah, you can see that that's a D shape right there. So that's going to catch right on this flat spot. And it's not going to move. Okay, so you can take the screw out of either side, I guess, and not have a problem. So let's put this. Uh, uh. There you go. Come on. There you go. Put this back on.
Okay. There you go. Hmm. Okay. That's the way she goes. Nice. And of course, there's this, just a single screw holding that pocket clip in place. So, it looks well done to me. And it looks like we, of course, this is for the inlay on the front. These other two are the same length. So we're good there. All right. Uh, interesting. Flat spot to the flat spot. Which is down. In through here. That's all the further it goes. But then you can put... Uh, one of the screws so it's basically a tube with screws on both sides which it'd be nice if it was just a one piece with a flat spot but oh well uh and this will sit down and then of course you know what i'm gonna put a little bit of lubrication around here and then i'm gonna let this blade I've already got these bearings installed. Okay. If you see this uh, tube here, uh, the bearings are sloppy around that because when you have this machined area in the blade to hold the bearings, you got that little inner collar there. Uh, so you really got to install the bearings in the blade uh, first to make sure they're positioned correctly so flip this around oh, Lord. and compress the lock and of course this one on this side well I mean we need this pin down here to the blade stop which is a big old thick hardy thing but then we've got to get this and this in in position so we can uh, flip these over and put the backspacer in. And then, of course, we've got this washer here. And I'm going to put a little bit all over the damn place. What? And so uh, this, of course, being the backspacer, goes on here and here. So that's dropping in. So now I've got this compressed. And let's flip over and put this in and push these out just oh I lost that okay yeah well it was kind of wonky to do it that way but okay and then we've got to lay this backspacer down correctly into the right position and it is snap this put this in here and uh, tighten this screw down on the other side and look centered okay good and put the screws in from the back side here like that and like this and it'll draw that side in and yeah that's tight that's tight I hope it's not too tight here and snap it open let's see what the drops like oop not over the detent there you go back up maybe a little slower than we had and I, I you know I'm going to adjust it on the front side just a little bit of a turn okay maybe just a micro turn looser it won't take much Okay, that's nice. It's centered. No blade play. 
And she's good. All right. Back it up. Okay. Now we're over the detent ball. Yeah. Yeah. Good looking. Centered up. Uh, humongous box. And it's the Max Ace Midnight Cat Studio Hive. I like it. It's unusual. It's not for everybody, obviously, but she's big. She's a little heavy. She's got a lot of style, and that's what we like. Love them knives. We're going to let you go, and you guys stay sharp.